Welcome everyone, this is Naomi Shanti from Alchemy Tattoo and Fine Art. In this video, you will see me painting my flamingo from the 30 birds and 30 days challenge I just recently finished. You have the opportunity to paint your own flamingo and utilize some of the tips from today and create your own work of art. Below you will find the link to the Alchemy Boutique where you can also purchase your own kit that can be shipped directly to you or we also offer local pickup. This kit includes all the supplies you need. Something to keep in mind when learning from me, you will see that I offer more suggestions and it isn't a one way to get from point A to point B. We are all different unique artists on this journey. So you might find a way that works great for you in your process of creating and problem solving that looks different from me and that is totally okay. Go for it. As long as you are enjoying the process, then, fin then your finished piece is already successful. So if you will be using the Flamingo kit I put together, you will have a palette, brushes, acrylic paint, and a wood round. On the wood round, you will see that I already sketched the Flamingo out for you. Feel free to turn it over and create your own sketch if you'd like to go rogue. I totally encourage it. You don't have to have something that looks just like mine, but if you wanna run with what I've sketched for you, let's do it. I do suggest having two bowls of water, some colored pencils, and any other media you may want to utilize in your piece. So in my artwork, I typically use watercolor and something I call an acrylic wash. You will be using the acrylic wash. And in a separate short video, I will show you how to make your own acrylic wash. I do encourage you to work in acrylic wash as a beginner, when painting on the wood because the wood soaks up a lot of paint. And when, we're, when I work in watercolor, I treat it more like a stain and I work in a lot of layers. So watercolor is more translucent, whereas the acrylic wash will be a bit more opaque. So you'll be able to work with less layers. It has the potential to dry a little quickly. Um, however, you can overwater the wood and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So the goal here isn't to cover the wood completely as much as it is to accentuate like the beautiful wood grain and texture, which is what I love the most about wood. So the acrylic wash will do this without having to use as many layers to get the desired richness of color. So I also really like to use colored pencils to add details and texture. However, that's gonna be completely optional and if you are interested, the brand of colored pencils I'm using now is Prismacolor. So let's get started. Okay, so now that you understand how to create some acrylic wash and you have a few different colors to choose from, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I like to use kind of like a smaller size brush, not too tiny, but enough that it's gonna cover the space. Something that I've always told the kids in the past is small brush, small space, big brush, big space. So with the flamingo itself, uh, we're not covering too many uh, like huge spaces, so we don't wanna go too big of a brush, but we need one small enough to where we have some control with the curves and some of the tight edges. I went ahead and I started more with some of the lighter pink, like that pink, it's almost like this peachy color. And I filled in that head and neck of the flamingo with that entire color first. I went in ahead and did that. So then as I moved into like the darker tone, I can blend it out a little easier. So go ahead and do that with your brush. Uh, You'll want to move like back and forth. You can see I tend to move a little more quickly with my hand. Just back and forth, back and forth. And if you look closely, I'm working in layers. I continue to add that color tone. And if you are sticking with a watercolor and not with the acrylic wash, this is really important. Once I moved into like that dark pink, I added where I wanted it to go. And then I just, before things started to dry too quickly, I blended it back and back and forth. So just take your time. Don't rush this process. 
go ahead and like go back and forth between like that light pink and the dark pink until you get the blend that you want and you get that color tone that you really want. If you have trouble keeping like your brush steady, you'll notice I use my pinky a lot to just kind of um, steady my hand. I do this while I tattoo as well. I always make sure I have a strong base, whether I'm using like the side of my hand, that pinky to hold steady. So it's almost as if I'm doing some like fancy drinking with some tea and I stick that pinky out, it's always there as a nice strong base for me. Something that you'll notice um, with working in watercolor or the acrylic wash, I like to choose one or the other. I'll either start with my lighter tones or my darker tones. I tend to not go back and forth too much. There's always an exception to the rule though, okay? There's always the exception to the rule. So I don't always like stick to just one thing. But with this flamingo in particular, I tried to stay working with the pinks before I went to any other strong um, dark tones such as like black. Uh, just so things didn't get too muddied up, my brush stayed clean and I stayed fairly organized. I like to think I paint or yeah, I like to think I paint with more of this like controlled chaos. It doesn't always look the same, um, but there is a rhyme or reason in why I do and how I do certain things. If you are a new artist and you are utilizing this video to kind of help jumpstart you, I do want to encourage you to create your own rituals so that um, you are utilizing techniques that work like really good for you. And they may not look like mine. And they, you might pick up some pieces from other artists, pick up some things from me, mush it all together, have some good ideas of your own, and then poof, you have your own ritual, you have your own way. And when I talk about rituals, it's almost like a routine, but Routine sounds so mundane and boring. I feel like when I go to paint, it's this real magical process, you know? And so what might seem like routine to someone else really is this magical ritual for me. Um, I have things set up in my art room a certain way. My paints are always in one spot. I have a rolling cart for all of my acrylics and my paint brushes stay in a certain area and I you always use the same you know water bowl and this isn't gonna look the same for you as it does for me you're gonna have your own but I highly encourage you making it this real magical process so when you have all these things in place when your space feels so good um, for you to create it's not going to be work setting up. It's already ready for you so you can jump right in and start making some magic. So you have watched me throughout this process of adding the pink onto the wood, how many layers I am working. And um, it's definitely this process of going back and forth, back and forth, dark pink, light pink, dark pink, light pink. And you can see um, how I've created the soft blend. I'm just being really, really patient, all the while allowing the wood of the grain to show through, but also making sure that there's this really nice richness. If as your paint begins to dry, um, it still feels a little, um, not, not as rich in tone, but almost like too matte, uh, too bland. I go ahead and mix a few other pinks. Like flamingos aren't just one flat pink. So feel free to, um, create and get a little exploratory in how you mix some of these colors together. If you're using my kit, there's going to be some pre-mixed pinks for you, but feel free to add to that. What you have is a basic acrylic, so you can play with that a lot. 
When I went to the beak of the flamingo, it was a really nice, strong black. And you'll see that I started out with a watercolor, but then I tend to go back in with a full acrylic where I'm not creating the acrylic wash, which is mixing, which is really watering down the acrylic with water. I don't do, I won't do that. Um, I'll start out with the black watercolor. I'll do another layer with the straight acrylic black paint. And sometimes I will, instead of the acrylic black paint, will go in with the black Prismacolored pencil and add some really nice detail and deepen up some of the black tones. Um, but with this flamingo, I wanted it to have a very strong contrast. So I stuck more with the paint and I did add some colored pencil as well. So I decided for the background to, um, I, that I really wanted some more contrast. So I went with the like blues and greens. I really wanted to have this like Key West, Florida feel. My 30 birds in 30 days challenge, they were all Florida birds, like all birds that you can fly, find here in Florida. And I feel like the flamingo is that, <laughs> like it is that bird that, you picture the plastic flamingo in the front yard of your grandmother's house down in like Key West, Miami, even though I'm in the country of Central Florida, but I still feel like the flamingo just really speaks to the Florida aesthetic and it always will. It's classic. So I really wanted to play off the that background. And with the small wood round, um, you know, I didn't want to do anything over the top that's going to take away from the bird. So I just stuck with that blue teal, um, that lime green, and then I added some deeper tones of blue um, and created almost like that ombre type feel. And I just went back and forth as if I did the pink going darks into the lights, darks into the lights with those uh, colors. I used my smaller brush to get up close to the face um, and tight edges. And something that you'll want to keep in mind, like I don't push really hard. I'm very gentle. You don't have to like jam the paint into the wood. The wood accepts the paint so beautifully. There's this gorgeous relationship between the two um, where they want to be married together, the wood and this paint. So allow the wood to just absorb it. Don't shove it in there. Uh, the wood is already, already going to be a bit textured, which causes some wear and tear on the brushes. So no need to really push. Just be nice and gentle. Um, something I like to tell the kiddos is apply the paint with your brush as if you're trying to put eyeliner or eyeshadow on your dog. You're not going to do it really, really hard. You're going to be really nice, soft, and gentle. But please, don't put eyeliner on your dog. <laughs> you know, it's just an example of how gentle you would be if you were putting eyeshadow on something that you loved so much. You're not going to want to poke, poke their eye out. Just nice and gentle and use that pinky for stability. You'll see that I take some different colors of colored pencils. I liked working with this beautiful maroon color to just deepen up some of that pink. Then I also took this lighter um, French gray, which is pretty light. It's, it's more of an off-white gray tone, um, just to add a bit of highlights and again, accentuate the wood grain. So if you look closely, when you apply that, uh, when you see how I've applied the colored pencil, it's, it's almost like a crayon rub and it's bringing out that wood grain. I'm not um, oversaturating the wood with the oily colored pencil.
So when working on the eye of the flamingo, my suggestion is to get the smallest brush, or if you have a square brush, use that kind of cornered edge of the brush to get really nice thin line around the outer part um, of that flamingo eye. And I did use, I like to use black, or you could even use like a, um, a really nice like gray, like really deep, deep, dark gray. I did use the colored pencil because the light um, of the, the eyes tend to be lighter on the flamingo. And I wanted to be really careful not to, um, not to lose that white highlight of feather tone around the eye as well, which a lot of people don't realize this unless you've been painting for a while, but there is a white watercolor and I absolutely love using it. Um, the white watercolor, I'll use it on its own, but it's extremely, extremely translucent, but it's really great for like muting, softening tones, and even blending colors together. But it will create a chalky, um, a, a chalky feel if you use it too much. Definitely use it sparingly and remember that it is very translucent. Um, so it's not going to be a really vibrant white. And that's where I love the acrylic wash because I can take white acrylic paint, which from the kit you should have, um, add a tiny bit of water to some of the white just to water it down a tiny bit. And I have a much more um, opaque uh, form of white that's gonna be very bright and very vibrant on my piece without taking away from the wood grain. Something that's really important to keep in mind when working with wood is you can actually use too much water. So the watercolor on wood and even the acrylic wash on wood, there's a really nice fine balance, like a fine dance that goes between the two. You don't want to saturate it as if it's a whole water park. Um, it's really easy to do that to get like too much water and what'll happen is the wood will swell. It can change the wood and make it more um, like fuzzy, uh, almost as if like you've rubbed the paintbrush on your watercolor uh, painting with paper way too much and then the paper gets those like pills. Um, it, it gets a little like bumpy. Well, you can do the same thing to the wood but there's really no going back. You can sand some of it out, but it definitely changes how it will receive that paint. So I always say be more conservative with your water. Don't overdo it. Um, it's easier to layer uh, than to oversaturate it and swell that wood. And a lot of times my very large pieces, I have to um, work on them over a matter of like weeks because I'll use a lot of water and then I need like the wood to actually dry and this can happen too with the smaller wood round it can take a long time for that wood to dry even if you want to use um, let's say a hair dryer which I did for some of these pieces from the 30 birds in 30 days because I was my goal was to not sit there for hours and hours on a painting, but to do a bird painting every day. And that meant I had, you know, maybe at most 60 minutes. So then I would use the blow dryer to dry off some of this wood so that I could layer some more without, um, without actually destroying the quality of the wood overall, right? So I always say be a little more conservative because you can always do more, but once the damage is done, the damage is done. So just something to keep in mind. 
Now, as you're finishing up your piece, you might find that the wood is actually quite wet. And if you do decide that you want to utilize your colored pencils, applying colored pencil on the wet wood is, is not going to be as successful. I'm not saying it doesn't work because I have done it. And if you watch any of the videos that I will post from the 30 birds in 30 days challenge, there are many of times that I'm actually applying the colored pencil on top of a damp or wet wood, but you're not going to get a strong, uh, a strong color from it. It's, it's not even going to be fully like saturated in any way. It's just very light. Um, and I, I think it works for some things, but if you're doing detail and you need tight edges, it's just not going to work. Um, so allow your wood round to dry a tiny bit. Um, put a blow dryer to it if you really are that impatient. But sometimes a good 24 hours is great at just letting that wood dry out. This wood round is small, so it shouldn't take as long. And then go back and then you can actually have a second set of eyes, a fresh new set of eyes on your piece. And then you can finish up some of those details. Always keep a really good pencil sharpener uh, for your colored pencils if that's what you're going to be using. The colored pencils um, will dull out really, really quickly on the wood. So I had to have a nice sharp pencil sharpener with me at all times. One of my favorites is uh, one that I actually used while I was doing hair and makeup years ago. And yes, it's like one of my original makeup tools and it's still sharp. It's still amazing. And it's a round metal one. And I like that I can either get a long point or a short point. Um, you can also, you know, use like a razor blade and sharpen them yourselves. And then the only other successful pencil sharpener with my Prismacolors um, has been the actual Prismacolor um, pencil sharpener. If someone else has a suggestion, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear. But I've my favorite has been the one that I use for hair and makeup, and I can't seem to find one that is equivalent. Okay, as you're finalizing your details, don't forget every artist needs to sign their name. I like to try to find a place where I sign it. You can use your paint. I wouldn't suggest using it as an acrylic wash. If you use the acrylic, use a very tiny, tiny brush and go ahead and sign it. You can do your initials. I like to use the colored pencil and I like to sharpen it really good and then just find a spot where it's a little less obvious but still there. So it kind of goes with the overall composition. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video and me taking you through the process of painting, giving you some tips and suggestions and also watching me paint in my real time in my very natural way of painting in my home art studio. I hope it was super helpful and informative. Feel free to leave comments, ask questions. I'd love to hear from you and help you along your art journey. And stay tuned on the Alchemy website for more art kits uh, that'll help get your creative juices flowing. So thanks everybody. Have a great day.